Good morning, evening, or afternoon, everybody. It's Kago coming at you with another video. So today, we're going to be discussing blacksmithing specializations and the best ways that you can uh, sort of go into that in order to make a ton of gold. Now, this obviously is going to be a few varying choices depending on the type of craftsman that you want to be. But all in all, I think there are multiple paths that you can go in order to make some awesome profit. But before we get into the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Everything you guys do helps my channel grow, helps me get discovered, and helps me help as many people as possible, which is the entire point of my channel. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the biggest thing that you are going to want to do is get profession knowledge. Now there are a plethora of ways to get profession knowledge and I got tired of simply explaining that every single video that we were doing with these profession specializations. So there will be a link to my profession knowledge guide down below in the description. Be sure to check that out in order to get all the profession knowledge that you need. It's about a 10 minute video that covers every single aspect of profession knowledge that you need to go and do. But anyway, let's get into blacksmithing specializations. So blacksmithing is obviously using ores to make gear. Now there are a multitude of paths that you can go down, but the most important one is making sure you get your ever burning ignition and sort of focusing on this no matter what spec that you want to do. Um, you're gonna see I kind of messed up mine, but as you can see here when you use this, um, it will give you more uh, ingenuity, multi-craft, and resourcefulness. So it's just a straight buff to use for blacksmithing and is very useful for anything that you are going to do. Now when we go to specializations, there are four. So we have the Everburning Forge, which is how you make this. Definitely unlock this one and go into it at least going into it 10 points and then you can pick what you want to specialize in so as you can see i did not do this because i messed up my specs and i wanted to go right into crafting and utilize my ores because i wanted to see if i could make it very profitable but it definitely messed up here with that so i would highly recommend that the very least you go 10 into this to unlock your spec every point you put into this will give you uh three ingenuity multi-craft and resourcefulness so eventually you will cap this out but if you're going such a multi-crafting build I would put three I put 10 into this and then I would put 20 into your multi-craft and what multi-craft would be for is making a lot of the trade consumable goods so we would then go into means of production so I'd highly recommend putting 30 into here and then if you want to go into weapon stones you go into stonework so I was working on the gathering stones for my gathering character as well as I'm going to go into weapon stones uh, they're not good at this moment so so I branched off and I'm going in towards alloys and just sort of going to be sitting here making core alloys for the multi-crafts. So that is the build I'm going. If I were pure specialization, I would go 20 or 10 into this, 20 into Glorious Forge, 30 into here, 30 into here, and then 20 into alloys. If I were to redo my specs, as you can see, that is quite obtainable. With, the, with this build, I went for a tool enhancement. Those stones just aren't really selling too much at the t at this time. I'd imagine they'll sell later on, but um, it was just sort of a mistake. The alloys is definitely a huge money profit maker to go into forges, alloys, and then into here with the multi-craft specialization. So I messed up because I wanted to just go straight for stones and try to make as much profit as possible, but that is the multi-craft build. You can also go over here and you can work on uh, trade tools and trade accessories however you cannot multi-craft these so this goes into the build that we would recommend for weapon smithing and armor smithing no matter which one you are going into i would highly recommend that you max out your forge here so put 40 points into forge because this ever burning is going to be very nice for the ingenuity and the resourcefulness buff that you would get for this and then i would go into ingenuity if you want to make top tier gear so if you're weaponsmithing and armor smithing and you want to make those specific 
pieces, I would highly recommend that you go into Ingenuity because concentration is your most valuable resource when it comes to being able to make those high-end crafts that people pay a lot of gold for. However, you can really only pick one at this time early on in the expansion. So regardless of what you wanted, you would just pretty much need to go here. So like for weaponsmithing, you have blades. So I can actually learn this sub-spec. It doesn't really do anything. And then if I wanted to make short blades or long blades, so going here would let you make an Everforged Longsword, and going here would let you make an Everforged Saber, going down to Hefted, and then going into Maces would let you make an Everforged Mace, and this would let you make an Everforged Great Axe. So those are just the options that you can go down. I don't think you learn anything from these, but these ones allow you to use Finishing Reagents, which can help your uh, profession. So if we're going for some weapon or armor smithing we would go 40 into here we would go 20 into ingenuity and then you can go resourcefulness if you want to save mats but that's only if you're crafting it for yourself really you would get decent mats from people's orders and sort of print free money but resourcefulness is not the most important thing right now the most important thing is making sure that you can craft these high-end pieces of weapons armor whatever you want to go down so for weapon smithing those are what you can go down then just sort of fill these out um to the best of your abilities getting the sub spec here lets you use finishing reagents which can be very very powerful for getting those uh high-end pieces of gear made um as well as the the base amount is pretty good too so then you just pretty much pick one thing that you want to specialize in and you be the best person at making those that is the most profitable thing right now you can kind of go widespread at the moment a little bit but it's not going to be too profitable um when it comes to making all those then next we have armor smithing this is where you can make multiple things at once just because of how the trees work um, so the same thing with ever burning forge you put 40 into here then 20 into uh, in, in, uh, Your intuition here so you can get ingenuity capped and then you look for armor smithing So depending on what you want to make so chests greaves shields or you can go helms uh, shoulders boots or you can go belt bracers and gauntlets if I were to be a guessing person one you can look at every plate um you can look at every plate wearer's uh, bisless, so warriors, death knights, and paladins, and see where they're going to be getting these crafted pieces. I would personally lean in the area of fine armor, because fine armor will allow you to make gloves, bracers, and belts, which are two off pieces. So putting your 30 in here, putting 30 in fine armor, and then that's for the finishing reagents, and then sort of going into a little bit of belts, vamp braces, and gauntlets. It really depends. Once you have 30 and 30 here, you'll have a lot of crafting points, so you should be able to make these and um you'll be able to uh do these things capping them just lets you repair this slot for free which is really weird um to cap out what you get so you really only need 20 points in these unless you want free repairs in your armor slot it's not too crazy to do that so i would highly recommend that you just sort of go 20 into those if you're still struggling you can cap it out for the extra five points but that would be my recommendations for armor smithing and blacksmithing just on a pure profit note and what you're able to do for people but anyway guys that is a complete walkthrough of the blacksmithing tree what you should do obviously make sure that you get your blacksmithing gear as well um and you i like to go as you can see it has three stats so i like to go with multi-craft for my multi-crafting build you cannot enchant multi-crafting unfortunately but if you could i absolutely would and then eventually you can upgrade these to blues but i would definitely recommend using your artisan's acuity to get more profession knowledge at this time but anyway guys that is my complete and total blacksmithing guide i will have more more detailed guys coming out for engineering jewel crafting alchemy i'm working on getting those characters max level so i can get them for you guys as soon as possible but hopefully those trees will definitely be min max and great trees so you can just copy it instead of listening to me talk about where i messed up and what i learned from that for my builds but anyway i truly hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions anything you'd like to uh let me know about definitely drop it down below and i will do my best to answer them so until next time i'll see you later have a great day Bye bye hey you yes you
are you still there? Well, I appreciate you for taking the time to watch this entire video and making it to the end here. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out the other videos about World of Warcraft listed in these playlists down below. And thank you again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.